What do you mean you don't know where it is? No, look, destroyed or not, it's still in there. What do you mean unrecoverable? Listen, I quit working at the Pizzaplex two days before the earthquake hit. I had a box of all of my stuff packed, and the only thing that I managed to take out on the first day was this wrench. Of course I have a right to be upset about losing my personal belongings. There's something really important in there. No, please look again. You really don't understand. Someone at Steel Wolf Studios made a cool prop and expected me not to get inspired? Let's make a fast wrench. This is basically what I envision it to look like and be about the size of. I also have written down what materials I want to use. I scaled it to be slightly smaller than I think it's going to be because I want it to seem like it would look pretty big in a child's hand, but average size in an adult's hand because we are playing as a kid in the game. It also gives me a chance to use all these little spare foam bits that I had lying around from the last thing because I don't want to be wasteful. I started working on this thing literally the day that the DLC came out. I got home from work, I watched Docos playthrough of the whole thing, and then I immediately went downstairs and started sketching out my design. So there are going to be some inaccuracies because there weren't really any clear reference images. I had to take screen grabs from the playthrough to make this thing. I also didn't know that I would be working with EVA foam this soon after the first project I ever did with it. Nor did I really want to, but when you have the materials on hand, you gotta use them, I guess. It was still very frustrating, but there were a lot less hiccups than the first time around, now that I had kind of a semblance of what I was doing. It was interesting to see what I had learned and how I was applying it to the new project. Cutting out and sanding pieces to be even still sucks, by the way, and I still don't have the money to invest in a proper tool, but We'll get there someday. Maybe. I, I hope. Someone remind me in the future if I start doing this again to buy a Dremel or something. We are using actual craft glue. Look at this. Elmer's craft bond. Might have used a bit too much of this glue to hold everything together because it was supposed to cure in five minutes and it did not. I had to hold it down for quite a long time. Oh, and it started leaking out of the side, so if the seams look funny, that's why. scares me about this is that it's rounded so I don't know how well that's going to translate with my minimal skills. Awfully! It's gonna translate awfully, there's our answer. Yeah, I had to make two different handles. Can someone also remind me to invest in an X-Acto knife? They're not that expensive. Also, because it was at the angle that it was at, I had to hold it in place while it dried and my hand got so tired from just squeezing it like that for so long. Ah! We've got the base bit of assembly out of the way. Time to, in true FNAF fashion, set things on fire. After melting the stubborn foam bits and carving out a couple of details, it was time for the paint job. I don't really have much commentary on the paint this time around, so can we talk about the actual game? Because that was so good. Good might be a bit of an overstatement, but it was a huge step up from base security breach. Like, do you remember how buggy and absolutely awful the game was when it dropped on day one and the day one patches, like, didn't fix anything? The quality of the DLC is just so much more playable. Like, I actually felt like I wanted to download this game for myself. And I really can't, because again, no money. I'm moving back to school in like three weeks. I can't spend any money right now. But if I had the opportunity to, I would. There were also parts of it that actually, genuinely scared me. Like, I didn't think base security reach was really that scary at all. It was cool, like, visually, but nothing really, like, knocked me out of my seat. Now in Ruin, when the freaking 
I don't know what its name is, but the virus bunny shows up. That's not Glitchtrap, apparently, but I thought it was. The first time it, like, popped up, I almost fell out of my chair. Literally. Love the mechanic of switching off the nodes for the security thing. Don't fully understand the lore implications of there being an AR vanity mask. I'm probably just a little stupid or forgetting something that I learned from the past games. But I still liked playing through it. The glitch world, visually, is so, so neat. I just loved how it looked. Cassie is a cool protagonist. Eclipse was a pretty cool reveal. Roxy made me cry. I'm still very sad about Roxy. She was so sweet during that scene. Ah, cannot believe Five Nights at Freddy's gave us both a dad bear and a mom wolf. How so true of them. Speaking of Dad Bear, can you believe Freddy and Bonnie, the poster, and the... That was also so sad. Like, they were best friends. Boyfriends, even. It was so sweet, and I am very sad about Bonnie being decommissioned now that I have actually seen his design. Remember back in the day, when everybody was trying to make a design for Glamrock Bonnie? The canon one? It's cute. It's not my favorite. I wish it were a little more colorful, but it's so cute. My only big gripe with this game, I think, is the endings. Same thing with regular Security Breach 2. None of the endings really left me satisfied. I feel like all three of them leave a lot of unanswered questions. None of them explain how Cassie gets out. One of them just outright doesn't let her get out. Like, you could have at least provided her a little bit of closure after literally destroying the mimic that was chasing her? Not even, like, a three-minute call with Gregory? Come on, man. What happens to her? This is why I should never review things. So this is a lollipop stick. Like, it's used to make candy and stuff. I tried to make a batch of cake pops a couple of weeks ago, it was my mom's idea, and they turned out absolutely awful, so now I just have a bunch of these left over. And they are, I feel like, the perfect size and shape to be the little antennae. So that's what we're gonna use this for. Cutting this in half was not satisfying at all. In fact, it was very difficult, and it took a whole lot of force to get it to snap. Wait for it. There we go. I also painted these the wrong color at first, and I didn't realize it until I sent a photo of this to my mom, because I told her I had burned myself on a hot glue gun again, and she was like, what are you making this time? So I sent her a photo alongside of a reference photo, and they didn't look the same, so I had to completely start that over. Yes, of course, I cannot escape having to use hot glue in some capacity. One of these days, I will be free of the curse. I was originally going to use a bottle cap for the dial, but I ended up having to use foam bits instead because I couldn't find a bottle cap that one wasn't in use, and two was actually the right size. I also ended up having to paint some of the details while they were on the finished device, instead of separately, like how I intended to do them, just because they wouldn't dry fast enough, and since they're round surfaces, it's super difficult. Oh my gosh, at this point the paint job was starting to drive me crazy, because every time I turned around, I swear there was another thing to touch up, it's because foam is so absorbent. It's because this just isn't a good surface to paint on without primer. And I forgot to prime because I was in such a rush to get this done. And oh my god, I was getting ready to throw this thing across the room, but that was going to chip the paint even more and make it even more of a f And we're done. I'm very satisfied with how it came out. I think it's a cute little prop. I don't really plan on cosplaying Cassie or anyone who uses it, but it's nice to have. Thanks for watching.
how many times do I have to tell the kid that this isn't a toy? I don't care how many of the things in that facility he's played with before.